Welcome home. We are WNST, Towson, Baltimore, Baltimore Positive. We are positively in Fells Point, Maryland for the Fells Point Oyster Fest. Uh, it's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. I told Roz I got to get the Raven scratch offs, but I have just a, a nice little batch of these Gold Rush 7s doublers and a really nice crowd down here at Cooper's today. Uh, all weekend long, this is going on. Springsteen's in town, Pearl Jam's in town. Lake Street Dive is playing tonight at Merriweather. Pearl Jam was last night. You would think I'd be hungover. I had like four beers before the show, that free water at the CFG Bank Arena, and Pearl Jam singing me uh, all night. I woke up this morning, I didn't realize who I was or where I was going, but I'm going to Sticks tonight. <laughs> I got my Sticks belt buckle on. Day Shine, it's Riding Shotgun. It's all brought to you also by our friends at Liberty Pure Solutions. We talk about keeping the water clean. Um, they are my well water specialist, 800 clean water. Um, they keep my well water clean. They they actually took care of my plumbing uh, a couple weeks ago when I had a little pipe issue, uh, and they can do that for you as well. Our friends at Jiffy Lube Power Luke Up, and uh, I would have had a cup of Royal Farms coffee this morning but i'm pretty caffeinated i mean i'm ready for more rock and roll more rock and roll and then you like during the break you go to the bathroom you come back and you like look over at the pendry and cooper's has the greatest view ever right yeah, like, yeah. i mean you can see the dominoes you see the willy wonka factory the under armor factory you can do all of that here um you love baltimore you made baltimore life you're not like a yeah. real lifer you're you're a no. lifer now yeah but you're an adoptee of yeah. this area yeah. and you literally live in fells point I mean, and it's going on 26 years now. So, I mean, this is home. No question about it. Well, people say, well, there ain't no progress in Baltimore. And I'm thinking, no, we have problems. We've always had problems. But to say there's no progress, you haven't seen the shining city of Port Covington down there that I'll never call Baltimore Peninsula. But looking over at this pendry, for all of us that came down here and got sideways at the cat's eye, yeah. or you, you know what I mean, or rolled over to Roto's when we <clears throat> might have been 18 or 19, or, <laughs> uh, or Dionysos, even younger than that, breaking the Greek plates on the floor, Opa! Um, that was an eyesore for like, yeah. and so much so that people watch Homicide and think like it really was the police station, yeah, which yeah. cracks me up because I remember when they were shooting it. I tended bar right here with John Seda and Richard Belzer one night. The late <laughs> great serious? Richard Belzer. Wow. Um, I tended bar here one night for it was for leukemia, believe it or not. Uh, it's when I met Patrick Russell. He we, he talks about it all the time because he remembers it. His dog Cooper. And yeah. they did a fundraiser here one night with the Homicide crew. And that night, I parked over here, and it looked like a cop station, maybe, because it had a police station thing on it. But it was a completely gutted, awful... It wasn't any... It was a facade. It was like Blazing Saddles. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was just... It was a wreck. I mean, it was terrible. You, you would not want to get... You would not want to set foot inside of that thing. And Springsteen's in there sleeping right now. Yeah, we can't yeah. get to him. You yeah, know? let's go so, wake him up. Let's go wake him up. Yeah. Eddie Vedder. Now, yeah. they're probably over there having crumpets right now. So I don't... When anybody listens to this, you're going to know whether Eddie Vedder got on stage. But there is something about Pearl Jam... At our arena on a Thursday night, Friday, Springsteen and the E Street Band, still alive. It's 2024, all of that. Back-to-back yeah. -back night. Sticks is up the street at the Lyric. Lake Street Dive, which is my wife is going to Merriweather. And Wendy from Curio told me she's going to Lake Street Dive. My wife got a single in the fifth row yesterday. She loves Lake Street Dive. So They're she, great. She's skipping out. I mean, music brings the people together right yeah yeah and, and this is a fantastic music town man it really I mean, people is. don't even understand the the bands that this place has put out lately you know from future islands dan deacon not in the hip-hop scene in, in baltimore man this place is rich in music well and you love music and i love music and it's like sports first because like that was what we did and there's rah rah but like lawrence gowan came on this week from sticks and he's canadian um, you know, he, he's been doing this his whole life. He loves hockey, famously loves sports, but he's like, sports disappoints you. you know, he's like, I'm a Maple Leafs fan. Like, it's never even given me what I want. If you're an Oriole fan, it hasn't given you what you want, right? Whereas you got what you wanted if you went and saw Pearl Jam last night. You know, my yeah. wife's going to get what she wants tonight at Lake Street Dive. Yeah. I'm going to get what I want at Sticks. There's something about when you leave a show, 99% of the time, unless the band was sick, out of shape, bad, out of key, didn't care, lost a step or whatever. But even musicians that lose a step, Frankie Valley aside and lip, sick, lip syncing and all that. But even Bruce has lost a step. Uh, if oh, he was yeah. here, like, yeah. he might admit that. Yeah. But it's still great. I went yeah. and saw it last Saturday night. Yeah. It's still as great as any. 
I, I, I don't feel like it's Willie Mays at the Mets, right? You know what I mean? I feel like it's vibrant and musicians find their key, they find their tone, they find their energy, they find what they can and can't do after 40 or 50. I don't think I've ever once regretted in my life if I'm on the fence about whether to go to the show that night or not, especially a club show because in Baltimore I go to Auto Bar a lot, Soundstage, Rams Head Live. I've never once in my life regretted going to the show. I've regretted not going to the show. Always. You always regret what you don't go to, right? And I have never once regretted going. And if I'm on the fence, 95% of the time I'm going. Well, I'm, my only issue with concerts, other than the price, and I get the value, and I get, like, I, I didn't mind my Club shows, bucks. man. Uh, Club shows are still 20 30 bucks in a lot of yeah, cases. Yeah, and, and falling in love with new music, Lake Street Dive would be a great example of a band that I like enough, but I don't listen to them enough. My wife listens. I'm like, I would go tonight, maybe not for 100 bucks. You know what I mean? It was more of a $100 show for her than for me. And I'm like, well, then you go, and I'll go to, you know, like, I'll do what I do. But new music and finding new music when you're not a radio head anymore like you when you were a yeah, kid, yeah. streaming side of music and whatever, and, and the kind of music you play, where do you find it? I mean, you have young girls too, so I'm sure yeah. they bring music to you, but finding new music is not about B104 anymore, putting the radio station on, you know? Yeah. You, you have to seek it out to some degree. No, no question, and I mean, but there's plenty of ways to do that now, you know? I mean, the, the streaming services, as much as I hate them as a musician for the way they've sucked the, the revenue uh, out of our pockets as musicians, they, they do a great job with their algorithms of turning you on to stuff based on what you're already listening to. Right. If you like Bob Dylan, you might like Dave Shining. Yeah, yeah. Right? well, Literally. yeah. I mean, I'm more power pop, I suppose, than folk I'm but, but yeah up. but yeah i mean yeah if you if you like a certain artist and you listen to them a lot the algorithm will turn you on to something else similar um i also have an 18 year old daughter who turns me on to so much new music i i and i give it back to her she's way into the 80s and 90s she loves the cure and the smiths and the replacements so i turn her on to stuff like that and she gives me boy genius and claro and and hozier do a lipa no, 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 you don't do that. I, I don't you don't do, you're not no. a pop tart. I, I, I don't. I don't really do. Uh, like you don't do Taylor Swift. Pop. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I respect her. You know, I, I, I'm not. But I'm not gonna like. Go, Gosh, go I didn't know you to be snobby. I mean, I'm a little bit of a snob. Okay, I admit it. But when you say you. you and you just jumped right on me. You're like, I'm not folk, I'm power pop. And that's like, people. Well, a, a, a young lady just, I gave her a lottery ticket. She's, what do you do? And I used to say sports radio, but I don't really. I got bored with doing sports radio because I sort of invented it and did it and I'm done with it. I wanna, I'm like Sting. I don't want to do the police anymore. I want to do the symphony. I want to do something different. You're the you know? master of all media. No, I'm – well, thank you for that. But, <laughs> but the, the, the music part of you saying I'm a power pop guy, yeah. I'm thinking – were you a material issue guy? You know what I mean? I'm thinking what power pop would sound like to me in the late 80s. Probably like R.E.M. after they jumped the shark was a little bit of power pop. A little know? bit, yeah. Shiny it's like, Happy People was power pop. It's like pop, Squeeze, you know? Matthew Sweet, uh, I love all Big of that. Star um, in the 70s. Do you think um, Booty and the Blowfish was power pop? No. No. Okay, no. well, okay, that's rock. That's rock, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Power pop. Okay. Kind of schlocky rock, but yeah, just, you know. Be nice to my uh, boys. I mean, you know, come man, on, you man. are a snob, come on, man. Hootie? Don't, don't bring me any hootie, man. Come on. You can do better than that. Wow. I had a, I had a great summer with Hootie and the Blowfish. Really? Summer. It is amazing how we're all different, though, right? We're yeah, wired we, we all have our things, man. You know, I, yeah. I, like, I, I love can't. The Cure, but some people just don't get it. I yeah. love Depeche Mode, but Depeche Mode's not in Rush. they are bands like Depeche Mode and Rush. You'd look at them and say, they really don't. They have some distant cousins, but they really don't have any. They're not like Sticks and Foreigner and Ario Speed, you know, where yeah, they're the same yeah, sort of thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Right? There was always that one guy in high school who listened to Rush. That must have been you. That was me. Yeah. It was two guys, yeah. me and Kevin Eck. Two guys? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, I only had one. We were doing Red Barchetta. Yeah, it wasn't me. But I wasn't in the Yes corner or necessarily <laughs> the Pink Floyd corner. Yeah, you know? yeah. I was more in the ACDC Judas Priest. 
Iron Maiden group. You yeah, know? that's like prog rock or something. Uh, or, or what well, would you call like that? Well, more like Genesis. Or yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Genesis, yes. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, yeah. right? Yes. That was that was that yeah, group, yeah. right? That's not me. Those I, guys I, all played chess. I, I missed all of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed all of that stuff. Man. Oh man, yeah. we could go at this all day. Dave Shining, he really is a sports writer from the Washington Post and uh, Olympic. So what else are you doing now? I mean, I. The Olympics never end, and now like the LA thing's like on autopilot now, right? So well, figuring that part of it out. Well, before LA, there's a 26 Winter Games, only 18 months away, I suppose, in Milan, uh, Italy. Did you so go to Tokyo? I did go to Tokyo. That was we 21. talked about that. Right? Yeah, you had yeah. To, that was total lockdown, shutdown. Uh, not as bad as China. No? Uh, okay, to, China was worse than Japan for the Olympics. Yeah. From, from a lock. Oh, I love Japan. I mean, uh, you yeah. and I could go all day yeah, on Japan. Yeah. Was Japan open when you were there? Um, it was uh, quasi open. You Once you were in for 10 days, in the country for 10 days, and tested every day uh, for COVID, once you got to the end of the 10 day period, you were free to go. Did you go eat ramen? I need to know yeah. in Tokyo. I mean, oh, so yeah. you had a Tokyo experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tokyo's probably my favorite city on earth. It's an amazing city. I hi highly recommend to anybody who hasn't been. Gotta go. I tell people, and they're like, well, the food, the, 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 uh, get some, go to McDonald's if you have to, no, but, no, but no, don't no. do that. I mean, no, but, no. but Tokyo, I went 50, I went 20 years ago, and I went again like five, six years ago, and the amount of English has come along, I mean, it's really hard to navigate 20 years ago, but Olympics and things like that, and I think the same thing's true about Europe and Paris, that you, you can get by with your English, but in Paris, they want you to try to. They do. They respect you for trying. They do. Even if you can't get to the end of a sentence, they respect you for trying. A, a, a little merci goes a yeah. long way, right? Exactly. I mean, merci works. Merci beaucoup. Beaucoup. Get, throw that in, and man, yeah, you're, you're, they're, they'll, they'll smile. You almost look French, man. Yeah, I mean, when no, people, when, no. when I say you don't speak French, they'll be like, yes, <laughs> on pas. On pas. On pas. <laughs> All right, let's get some sports in here. All right. Um, you got anything? Let's do football quick. I mean, by the time this airs, they're going to win or lose, but just in the general sense – of where the Ravens are and navigating a salary cap and having an offensive line that's going to be cheap and young because that's what it's going to have to be. Um, I, I am a believer, but I'm also like this Dallas-Buffalo thing coming up here, they're not going to start 5-1 and one in my mind. No, and, no. and they're not going to be 13-4. and four. No, no. And like this whole year. AFC championship game at home thing, they we can't even talk about that till November for me. But last year's not this year. La and I learned this. Um, I had a smart aleck back in 2002 write to me. It was a poignant thing. Uh, a fan wrote to me and said last year was a long time ago. And that was about Trent Dilfer back in 01. Last year was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, it does and feel that's that that's true way. in every yeah. sport, right? Yeah, it really is because so much of the team turns over. Wow, I mean, look at the, look at the Ravens, man. I mean, almost an entire new offensive line, right? I mean, there's new, new personnel on defense. I mean, it's, uh, you, it takes you a few weeks if you're not paying attention over the offseason. It takes you a few weeks to start to know who's who. That's where I'm at with the Ravens. I don't pay attention to free agency and to mini camp and rookie camp and the draft. and I just can't do it. I don't have the bandwidth. So when they show up in September – I start to learn who the Ravens are, and I'm still at the point now where I'm still trying to put names to jersey numbers. Well, I got Chad Weasling here, NFL agent to the stars. The thing that screwed me up the most is when he's wearing his Oreo. He's a, oh, my nice. God, he is. Love he's he texting Brandon High right now. He's saying, hey, <laughs> you know, bring it, get the bullpen going. But the numbers, what they did from the vanity so that he can market these guys so they can get their NIL and all their <laughs> like, 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 Changing the jerseys, the numbers has effed me all up when number two's tackling somebody and it's, it's oh, a linebacker. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The college yeah. part of that, I, I thought it looked amateur, even at that level. Now the number thing makes it a little harder when you see a number four flying to make a tackle. In the secondary, you're like, oh, is that a safety? Is that so learning players' numbers in the first couple of weeks is the most important thing. That's really hard. Now that I mean, we're treading into old man yells at clouds territory here. Get you off know, my but, lawn, Shannon. Right, right. But uh, but no, I feel you on that. It's just you know, I mean, if you're not if you're not a hardcore and you're not paying attention to this all off season, you don't know who anybody is on week one. 
So yeah, and I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with learning this team. By the end of the year, I'll know this team. I'm learning a whole new way to do this after taking four hours of phone calls and doing therapy radio on Mondays when they lose, and then all week stretching it out, talking it out. So it's the greatest thing ever that I like the games more when Chad Steele's not towering over me screaming at me, <laughs> right, literally. I like the games more when I don't have to spend 20 hours this week talking about how crappy the offensive line was last week. And I like it more in an intelligent way where, like, Luke and I get at it three to five times a week about really core issues and go back and forth about it and present that. And then I move on and talk to you about music or Lawrence Gowan. Or, yeah. Like, I, 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 that's my declaration of independence this month was I'm not going to be mistreated as a journalist anymore. I'm not going to be treated like shit from the minute I walk in the door just because it says press on it. And that's really what's happened with the sports teams and in our industry in a large way. Some of the agents are at fault too, and I'll, I'll bring Wesley on, <laughs> Wesley on that too. But uh, for me, um, I, I, the, the conversation, I like sports more now that I, I, I give a little. I know as much as I've ever known. I can go all day, all night. I can show up in Las Vegas this week and do a Raven report for half an hour for them. But the fact that I don't have to do 40 hours a week, it allows me to exhale on a Sunday morning and just watch the game and then really be an old school sports writer again. Like what Jack Gibbons taught me, don't cheer for, you know, watch the game and present it as it is. And I've managed to put away my purple and orange underwear and go back to being just a journalist again, and yeah. I, I'm enjoying that yeah. part of it as a, as a grown up. Knowing I have a lot more wisdom at that point now, but I'm enjoying watching the game. And at four o'clock, it's over with. And I the post game is mine now, right? Like I get to say what I want to say, yeah, and and conduct it in that way. And I did this for 25 years, man. Yeah. Every minute of every day, I'm like you, like yeah. It it, it wore me out, right? I mean, it, yeah. it broke my spirit. It wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't fun anymore. That's right. And then once you get a taste of not being there and not being on deadline and not having to think through the game about what you're going to say or what you're going to write and you're on your couch and you maybe have a beer in your hand and you're watching it that way, consuming the sport, it's hard to go back. Well, the hardest part is asking a question that you know they're not they're going to lie, deflect, or not give you an answer. And your whole purpose is – I mean, like – they all went out there on Monday, and Luke wasn't, or uh, Lamar wasn't practicing, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So the first question is, where's Lamar? Right. And John's such a jerk that he can't just say, "Just gave him a day off." That's all you have to say. Just gave yeah. him a day off. But it's competitive advantage because Marvin's out in Oakland or Las Vegas now, and they're going to be preparing for Josh. Jo Stop! Just. Don't get your fans yeah, on yeah, edge. Yeah. You, you don't. Don't get your customers on edge. Just. How hard would it – the reporters are there to report. They're reporting that Lamar's not out there. How hard is it just to say, Lamar's fine. You'll see the injury report on Wednesday because I'm John. And I'm thinking, I don't need any more of that. I didn't even like that on Facebook Live at 3 o'clock when I tuned in as the, you know, the Dallas – Hook line, right? Like the, the cliffhanger. Is Lamar healthy or is he not? Why are you starting rumors? Like, why can't you just – it's just such a game. Like that's the I mean, part of it that I hated. It was – like the obvious question after the game last Thursday was, Lamar ran the ball 16 times. That's probably too much. Yeah. You're not allowed to ask that question because they'll take your press pass. Because yeah. I asked that question, and they burred up, and they got angry at the question. And I'm thinking, why am I there if I can't ask a legitimate question? I, I mean, I'm being serious. Oof. I mean, how, how much effort I put into getting on a plane to fly to ask that question? Reporting in this job has never been harder. It's so hard right now to report, to do a good job, to get to the bottom of things, to do a profile of a, of a high-profile athlete, the hoops you have to go through, the handlers, the PR, you know, the, it's, it's almost impossible now to do, a real, to do what I used to do, you know, get into the head of a, of a superstar athlete for a couple of days. It just doesn't happen anymore, or you have to sell your soul to do it. You have to sell your – expound upon that because I, yeah, I think I that's, mean, that's the crux. When yeah, people ask me yeah. how I got thrown out if I did something wrong, the bottom line is they're cowards. They didn't want to answer questions. They don't have to answer questions. The notion that there was accountability and we were going to build the press box in the middle of the stadium and then 30 years later – condense it and move it in the corner where there are no questions because they're in control of it I, I, while they use state money. It, 
it's gotten a little offensive to me, and I don't mind yeah. saying that as a citizen because I've been behind the lines and I know how they behave. And it's not with integrity; it really isn't. It's not. It's not with honesty. If it were, John Harbaugh would have met the media on Monday and said, "Lamar's fine. Don't don't worry about Lamar. We're, everything's we're about everything's about controlling the message. They all have their own in-house." Uh, news gathering operations, right? Ravens.com, Orioles.com. Uh, they want to control the message. If, if you know, they don't need the Washington Post anymore. They need TV. You know, they need Fox and the CBS. The TV they own, though. The TV they uh, own and control. Well, to some extent, implicitly, yeah. or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, but you know, they don't need they don't need the Washington Post. As crazy as that sounds, I mean, we're still our name still does go a long way. But they don't need us the way that they need TV and and they need their own in house operation, which is only giving you half of the story, right? Because it's the story, the part of the story they want you to see. Uh, but reporting as an independent journalist now has never been harder, and it's the one thing that you know would force me out of this job if I didn't need the job. Well, the real reporting, if it was the New York Giants quarterback and there were real people there, right, or up in Green Bay where Chad's running back is, the quarterback isn't on the practice field on Monday. Somebody needs to find That's out a big why. Deal. Yeah. Why? Yeah. So yeah. if it's his wife had a baby, if he's got the day off, if he's got the flu, if he had the sniffles, if he's got a bone bruise, whatever it is, there would be a report. Instead, John comes out and says – the reports Wednesday, and now they're – so why did he right. miss practice on Monday? I right. still don't know the reason for that, and it just moves on. If and it was just an off day, if they were just giving him an off day, you should say that because if you don't say that and you make it this mystery, it's just going to add layers of intrigue to it and make people leap to conclusions and try to report out on the margins of what it is when it's something as simple as the guy needed a day off and we gave him a day off. It's a perfect time to bring Chad in. I'm going to take a break. Dave Shinin's here. Chad Weiss is going to be here. I'm going to have you guys, because this was like the perfect time to bring him in and say, if it's your running back and the coach isn't speaking and we're questioning whether he's even healthy, the agent and the player are like, no, 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 I'm fine. Yeah. Don't, don't be you out would, there you starting. Think, right? Don't start yeah. rumors about me, right? Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We're, we're at the Coopers. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. Uh, Dave Shinin from the Washington Post is here. Chad Weasling's here wearing his Oriole jersey. He's got sort of his NFL agent cap sideways. He's got his Springsteen cap on the other side. I got my Sticks belt buckle on. Did you wear an Iron Maiden anything under there? Uh, he's a. This is a metal guy here. Watch nice. him. Nice. He's all a right. power pop, okay. dude. Okay. This guy's. This guy's Pantera. Oh, hell is what yeah, he's about. man. Back yeah. for more. We're Coopers. We're doing Oyster Fest. Stay with us.